All right, hey, what's up, guys? It's Jamie. Um, I've been working on a video the past couple days, but uh, it has not worked out with audio. So, you know, I just shoot these videos with my phone. Um, I don't do anything fancy. And some of the, sometimes it doesn't always work out. The inspiration for this video was I had a comment from a guy named uh, Dylan. I believe his last name is Zucker. That in his, his comment, I, I can't remember the whole comment by heart, but it was something along the lines of, in a correspondence because I try to answer whatever questions I get. And again, they're not answers because like I'm a guru, but they're just perspective. I'm like, well, here's why I think that. Right? Call it a debate or, or a discussion. Outside of a discussion, and sometimes those discussions open up uh, for me or for the other person some some. Uh, some, something that they hadn't considered, some ideas, right? They're called trading ideas. Uh, so the question was along the lines of, you know, you, you, do, you do leaps, long-term uh, uh, equities, right? I don't know, I'll throw, I'll throw that up there too. But for me, it's just a covered call that's over a year out. My, my covered calls are sometimes a year to two years out and I collect the bigger premium. And he's saying, well, you collect the bigger premium but, um, you know, you, you run the risk of losing the, the shares uh, because if the, the stock price jumps up, it's going to be too expensive to buy it back, right? And then you can't roll it out further, is what Dylan was saying, you know, so you're kind of stuck and you just got to wait a year or two until, until it expires and either you lose the shares, um, you know, you ain't got to wait a long time. So that was one part of his question, which which I'm going to address first. And um, again, it's, it's a it's a good point for consideration. So I had a covered call for Tesla for a hundred shares that expires at June twentieth, two thousand and twenty-five. I have since then bought it back, but but I collected sixty-one hundred dollars, and I'm rounding it off. Um, in premium, so that's sixty-one hundred dollars. Uh, I'm gonna use my hat here. That sixty-one hundred dollars goes to me. I got the sixty-one hundred. I will never lose the sixty-one hundred unless I buy back those shares. Right, I buy back the contract if I sold it. Um, now, if it expires, in this case, it's a pretty long ways out. It's a two years out. I do have to wait a really long time. And chances are, Tesla will most likely be much higher than 180. My current cost average on those shares is 139, 140 bucks. So I'd still make money, but mind you, I'd, if I didn't care about it and I was like, ah, whatever, then you know, two years from now, I would make four thousand dollars, right? Because I'd have the difference between 140 and 180, which is four thousand dollars. Because at that strike price, it doesn't matter if it's 181 or 2081. I'm only going to get the 180. So I miss whatever the upside is over that time frame. But I also kept the $6,000 or $6,100 that I can't lose. Okay? So I'd, uh, ultimately, the bottom line would be I'd make about 10 grand in two years. That's not bad if you do the math. I mean, considering I got $13,000, $14,000 invested in it to make 10. I don't know what that what that is. That's going to be 60, 70 percent, I would imagine, um, ROI over the whole course of, of the time frame. Okay, quick mention: 71 percent is a nice return. There's nothing uh, bad about that, but it's two years um, that I have to tap the money. But that is pretty much almost guaranteed. I got the 6100 uh, and probably another 4000. But the prediction for Tesla in June of 2025 um, it, it is, is very likely to be over um, $300, $400, right? It doesn't mean it will, but let's say it goes to $350 to $450. Then I'm not making $10,000. Um, I'm making twenty to 30000 maybe more if it really goes crazy. So you, you, do, you do risk the... Um, um, the the exponential upside right over that much time with a company with such strong fundamentals products and services 
Uh, so you have to consider that as well. Okay, but that's not why I trade those. I'm looking for a short-term gain. So my, my hope is that it would drop lower, the premium would drop lower before uh, two years. Now to, to respond to the first part, which is, oh, you, you can't get rid of those of these shares, um, you can't sell them because they're locked up in the contract. And if it jumps up to 280, the premium is gonna be way over 6,100 and you'd have to take a loss. You know, I'd give up the 6,100 plus have to pay another one, 2,000, who knows, right, to buy it back. So it would be a loss. Keep in mind, the stock price has gone up. So even though I would essentially be losing money to buy it back, if I bought back those shares, the share price is higher. So I'm also gonna kind of offset the losses of how high that premium is in, the, in, in that the stock price is higher and I'm not gonna lose the shares. You know, I, don't, I can't do the exact math now because you know, I don't have it in front of me, but um, I'm, I'm pretty sure it would be pretty, pretty close, right? But again, that's not what you wanna do. You're, you're trying to make a profit, but it, this is just in case it happens and you know, what, what now? You know, what do I do now that that's happened? You can always have a strategy, a plan. I, I think, you know, I think it's a good idea to at least have as much of it mapped out as possible. So I, I, I'm not too worried about it because I'm only doing it, the premium, the premium is so much higher that if it does drop, I am gonna make a bigger gain. Um, like meaning if the premium price, if the stock price falls, the premium price falls greater. You know, it's a greater percentage, not, not, not percentage, but it's a, it's a greater uh, amount from 6,000 versus if I took a $500 premium. A one month premium, by the way, averages anywhere from 800, I wanna say to a thousand bucks. Like meaning if you did the same strike price one month out, I think you'd make about, let's say a thousand bucks, right? So right around a thousand dollars, which still not bad. You could do that every month, right, for, uh, uh, for the whole year. You know, that's $12,000. But you run the same risk of losing the shares, I think, on a shorter deadline, uh, meaning if it expires in two weeks or two months or a month, or we'll say a month, then you have to say, well, I only have a month for it to do what it does. If it shoots up drastically, then you, know, you, you have to buy it back or roll the position or you're gonna lose the shares. Like if it jumps up to 250, you own it for 140 and your strike price was 180 and you're like oh I don't think it's gonna go over 180 and then it goes to 250 right? or whatever the number is and you're like oh, I don't have enough time between the expiration date that I have which is a few days or a week where I think it's gonna come all the way back down under 180 in that example that could be any number so you're like okay I gotta roll a position or I gotta buy it back because I don't want to lose the shares so if the stock price has uh, raised up from one, your strike price of 180 to 250 as an example, then um, you know, it might be too expensive to buy it back, the premium. So now you either have to roll it out, right, uh, to a further date, or you have to buy it back and, and, and take the loss, just understanding that, well, the, the stock price is higher, so it's kind of like being almost, it might be a wash. Or close to one um, but to Dylan's question he said well you're already at the maximum uh, length of the expiration right like you can't go any further you just have to wait well keep in mind Dylan that it, most likely that I mean my option is two years out so if I did wait three months or six months chances are that expiration is gonna now be no longer June it might be um, August, right? Or, um, right? June, July. Yeah, August, or or uh, could be September, October. I, I don't, I don't know exactly, but it it could be farther out as I wait a few more months, and then who knows? The stock price could plummet down, and then um, you know it won't matter. So I could probably roll it out if I had to. Also, is you you can roll the strike price up um, from 180 to say 200. And then you got to look at the, the difference, of course, and then you got to map it out 
we're saying, okay, like if I went from 180, same expiration date, June 20th, 2025, to, uh, to June, uh, I'm sorry, to $200, there is gonna be a difference because if the premium shot up, understand that, yes, I'm gonna have to pay more to buy it back, but if I roll it over, I'm also gonna collect a higher premium for that higher strike price. You know, like meaning the strike price at $200 is now higher than it was when it was below 180, right? Like if it, it had gone up to 200, and I'm like, oh, I'm over 180, and I'm like, well, let me raise it up to 200, give it some time. I'm gonna collect a higher premium, so I won't, I might not lose as much. And I've given myself a little bit more room in that, uh, you know, 180 to 200, especially if I don't wanna lose the shares. I could also roll down the strike price, like meaning I could bring the expiration closer, six months, a year, a year and a half. Um, and then I gotta map that out, which I'll do in the next video. But I hope this gives you kind of just a, a little bit of, um, I hope this gives you a little bit of insight on how that works as far as if you have an expiration date, the farthest out it can go, you, you know, you're not necessarily stuck. And you have the same risk of losing the shares in a month uh, as I would in two years, right? The premium is gonna be higher in two years or a year or whatever the leaps are, are offering but um, there's always a risk. Like it's, there's no guarantees that you're gonna make money, um, just probabilities based on a lot of extenuating factors. You know, what is the going on with the company, the product and the service, what's happening in the macroeconomic, you know, environment of what's going on in the world. Is that influencing the company? With banking and, and um, I don't know, pro, uh, supply and demand chain, you know, like all those type of things. And with Tesla, it's like, are they building factories? Is there a problem with, is there a problem with their product? And Elon must do something really ridiculous, which is happens from time to time where it affects, affects the stock price because it's kind of tied together and people, you know, look at what the CEO of the company is doing and it, it makes them fearful and it affects the stock price. Uh, for a period of time, like what he did with Twitter and that type of thing. So um, th this applies to any company, but let's say the Cybertruck comes out early and then um, you know it's killing it and they reduce the cost and they increase the, the mileage of the you know, range of how far it can go. And, um, and they develop a plane, it's an electric plane and the robots are driving the cars and FSD, you know, like there's so many things that could happen that could drastically drive the price up or drastically drive the price down that you know you're just kind of looking at the volat volatility day to day week to week and saying like okay um, I collected this premium of $6,100 that I don't intend to keep in this case but if there is some extreme volatility um, hopefully in, in most cases for me if it's dropped and I collect $200 to $2,000 it gives me a better chance over that week or two um, to, to maybe get the percent, like if I did a $1,000 one month out expiration date, uh, the chances of it, me collecting 50% of that, right, make, making 500 bucks um, is probably not as likely if I have a $6,000 premium that I don't intend to keep, that if it drops, I'll make that same 500 bucks faster. You know, you know what I'm saying? Because it's a larger range a premium so that if it does drop, that premium will become lower, meaning I could buy it back for less and maybe make that same 500 bucks. That's the way it's been working out for me. And again, I'm not saying that that's the way you should do it, but it's just a strategy that, that, that I've been doing. So I'll, I'll talk about the other stuff in the next video, but um, because I've been having a hard time with the audio stuff, I wanted to get something up there in response. Okay, I'll see you guys later.